Welcome to the February 4th edition of the Beatdown Report. My name is The Clute. And sitting with me is our PR person. And bringing her in because uh, she has as uh, much passion for this subject that we're talking about today as I do. Which if you've, clipped, if you've clicked on the YouTube link, you already know what we're talking about. It's not like it's a surprise. It's not like this is a live show where, what are you talking about today, Clute? No, you already know what we're talking about. We're talking about killer whales, orcas. And uh, we're going to talk about a specific one. One that I actually grew up with. Not literally, but one that I grew up going to on a fairly regular basis, going to see. Um, and it really, um, it, it, there's times in in your life when you, when kind of the everything you know is wrong when the expectations of what you think is happening um is a complete fabrication is a complete lie and uh for me that was uh when i found out about see uh, killer whales in captivity and i want to give a little backstory for me and Jen, why don't you say hi? Who's sitting with us is hi. Jen. Jen, Jen LaBuzz, PR here. person. She is sitting there in the jump seat across the sturdy oak beatdown report desk. It is solid. That's this great. thing, this thing, we actually, we actually built this out of planks of uh, old Ironsides that's docked at uh, Boston Harbor. Um, but first off, I want to issue some corrections for last week's show. <laughs> Just kidding. I'm not issuing any fucking corrections. The offer still stands. Roger Ver, if you want to come on the air and chat with us about why I'm wrong, if I'm wrong, and I'm not wrong, but if I am, you're welcome to come on the show. He has not yet contacted us. His loss. Anyway, so uh, let me give you a little background. I grew up in South Florida, and there used to be two marine parks. There was Ocean World in South Florida. And I'm sorry, in Fort Lauderdale, you already know it's in South Florida. And then there was Miami Sea Aquarium in Miami, off Miami Beach, off the Rickenbacker Causeway. And I also lived just down the road, so to speak, from um, SeaWorld in Orlando. And Jen, you mm -hmm. live kind of close to, or, or you visited marine parks when I you were a kid, too. I would go to uh, Marine Land in Niagara Falls okay. for the Boston Aquarium. Right. And the Boston Aquarium, I don't, I think they have a dolphin show. Um, I know they That's have penguins. Right. I know they have penguins. Yes. Oh, they're adorable. Oh, they are adorable. And they're certain. And, and again, I, this show is not going to be burn down the zoo, drain the marine park. I believe that there, there is value to a zoo if run properly. I believe there's value to a marine park because it can provide to kids who can't go scuba diving. Because here's a, here's a, here's a clute pro tip. Scuba diving is the most expensive hobby you can take up. I am, I firmly believe especially if you don't live near the ocean. Um, PADI, the Professional Association of Dive Instructors, which is the main certification body for divers around the world. I'm a PADI member. I'm an open water diver. I think the PADI course was a great course to, to, to learn how to dive. But, but the whole concept of scuba diving begins with the idea of PADI, Professional Association of Dive Instructors, or put another dollar in. And you will be putting thousands of dollars in to your dive hobby. But so I think marine parks and zoos, you can't put all the kids on a plane to Africa. You can't take all the kids to a marine preserve in the South Seas, but you can go to a marine park or to a zoo. And again, if those zoos are run well, if those marine parks are run well, mm -hmm. you can you can you can open a world to children that wouldn't normally be available. I think as a teacher, mm -hmm. you would agree with that, right? Oh, definitely. And you I like it. Do you, do you take kids? So do you take your kids to I zoos? I don't get to zoo. No, we don't get to go on field trips, but I have been. Okay, you have been. And so again, and I know when I grew up, I went to the zoo. Mm -hmm. And I went to the, the Dreher Park Zoo, which is now the Palm Beach Zoo. And they have gone from kind of these enclosures that, you know, fit the animals' needs for, you know, food, water, shelter, but didn't really fit them for um, mental activity. But a lot of zoos are doing that with animals. But I think a lot of zoos understand that you cannot keep certain animals in captivity. And I think Jen and I were talking, we both saw killer whales or orcas back when we were kids. 
right? Mm -hmm. And what was your impression of them when you saw them when, when you were a little kid? What did you think of the marine parks? What did you think of? I, I was honestly confused because, again, I went to the Niagara Falls one. Why are there these things? Orcas. In, why are there orcas in a small tank? Why, right. why are they in Niagara Falls? And for the longest time, even as a little kid, I reconciled going to the marine parks, seeing dolphins and orcas and other animals in these enclosures because I thought, based upon the tricks they were doing and based upon the interactions they were having with the trainers, mm -hmm. that they were getting the mental stimulation they needed. So I wasn't too, feeling too bad for them. They look happy. They look happy. And dolphins. Dolphins have that perma smile. And I think the idea, you can separate dolphins and orcas. I think dolphins are smaller animals. They're, they're, they don't require as much space. And I think the really good marine facilities, I will say the National Aquarium in, um, in Baltimore, uh, near Washington, D.C., I went there to, and they are doing some actual good research into dolphins, into dolphin intelligence. There was this very famous study where they realized that dolphins have sentience. Mm -hmm. where they like what they do is they'll take a dolphin and they'll take a non-toxic marker and they'll draw an X on their side and then they'll put a mirror in the tank and then the dolphins will actually swim up to the mirror and they recognize themselves and then they look they turn themselves and they start looking at the X on their on the side of their body but a dolphin is like a 12 foot animal a marine animal and as much as dolphins all dolphins I imagine would like to be free in the in the ocean there is value to having them being able to interact with, with man, to be able to inspire the next generation of marine biologists. Would you agree on that? Yeah. But you grow up and see like Flipper and you're like, oh, they're always happy. Right. But again, there are shitty ways of taking care of dolphins. You know, you'll, Ocean World in, in, uh, in Fort Lauderdale had violation after violation with, um, I guess it would be the USDA that was, that was in charge of that. And eventually they shut down. And the Miami Sea Aquarium has dolphins, and they actually, Miami Sea Aquarium was the home of Flipper. Hmm. You know, many people outside of South Florida might not know that. But there's a difference between a 12 foot marine mammal and a 40 foot one or a 25 foot one. I think orcas are more 25 foot, uh, 25 foot animals. Um, 40 footers like minke whales and fin whales and stuff like that. But. Orcas, by all accounts, by all cetacean scientists, by all pinniped scientists, not pinniped, well, I guess pinnipeds because killer whales do eat seals, and seals are pinnipeds. Mm -hmm. But they, the killer whales have to travel, travel great distances every day. Something like 40 miles, 50 miles, they traverse the oceans to go from one meal to the next, or not even to go from one meal to the next, but just to areas that they're comfortable in, that they can play in. Uh, when I was uh, in Vancouver a couple of years back, me and my girlfriend, we went to uh, a Vancouver whale watch out of Steveson Harbor. And I highly recommend if you're ever in Vancouver and you want to go see killer whales, go do Vancouver whale watch, Steveson Harbor, British Columbia. And they take the boats out and you get on the boat and you travel to the killer whales, the orcas, mm -hmm. and you get to watch them in their natural habitat. And you can't get too close. Like the boats cut their engines when they see the killer whales and the killer whales by their own curiosity, come up to the boats. Or sometimes they even stay, stay away, but they're such big animals that you can see them. And it, it's a wonderful experience. But again, not everyone can experience it. Not everyone can see it. But as you said, as your experience at Marine Land of Canada, you were... I was confused. Because it's such a small tank. Yes. And it, it seems, it would be like putting us... It would be like making Johnny's studio here at Brick Cave Media Studios that this would be our permanent habitat. We could live in this. We could even get exercise in this. You put an exercise bar, you put an elliptical, we have a bed, you know, we have a toilet right over there. You could have someone bring us food. You and me and Johnny, we, we all three of us could live in this enclosure. But it would suck, wouldn't it? Mm. We would more than likely start really getting pissed off at each other, wouldn't we? Just a little. Just a little. So there has been a really a clampdown on marine marine parks to do something about this. And you just recently rewatched the uh, Blackfish documentary. Yes, I did. And just give us a give give the listenership if you haven't watched Blackfish and if you haven't watched it you should really go watch it on it's on a, it's a CNN films I it's believe on it's on Netflix. 
Uh, CNN shows it every once in a while. If you want, if you have, if you're not awake for it, just set your DVR. Look for it. You'll probably find it. But why don't you go tell us about what you saw and what what your impressions of it was? You know, I really wasn't shocked, and I I like in the beginning how they show the the death of the seal, mm-hmm. and kind of like that's that's what they naturally do, right? So, you know, they're not herbivores, right? So, and there's two and, types of killer whales. There's the yeah. transient ones, mm-hmm. which are more by their nature they're transient, meaning they go from place to place, and then there's the resident ones, which kind of hang around certain areas, this and. Uh, Lolita, Lolita the killer whale, which is the one, the one remaining killer whale at Miami Sea Aquarium, and I'm going to tell you about that story in a second. Uh, she was from the southern resident pod of killer whales off of uh, Puget Sound, off of Washington, which if you remember from our show Crush Depth, Senator Al Melvin is a liar, is also where the U.S. Navy released 500 gallons of radioactive water into Puget Sound. So Puget Sound's kind of been the a focus south florida we've been kind of in the axis of south florida with roger ver and al melvin and and bermuda triangle and all this other crap but we have like a, a kind of a, a marine caribbean theme going on for this month but We're traveling this traveling time. but what but what happened was uh, miami sea aquarium which is off the rickenbacker causeway in miami florida is not a huge facility because it's miami beach and there's a lot of stuff that's built up around it so they had a very small and if you go to a website called the dodo.com Go to the dodo.com and they are right on top there. They have a link for SeaWorld. Click on it and they you'll read the story. Lolita Advocate describes Whale's sad story. And I remember as a kid going there and thinking, man, this is a small tank. And they had two whales. They had two whales in that tank. They had Lolita and Hugo. And Hugo was, you know, Lolita's only other killer whale. I don't believe he was from the same pod. He was from a different pod that they had captured. And that would be like, we know each other. We like each other. We're friends. But that'd be like taking a stranger and making them live in a small studio with someone else. There's going to be conflict. Hugo was always described as kind of neurotic. And back in the 80s, uh, most killer whale orca tanks that are on display have these glass walls so people can see them swimming through for the shows. And Hugo, they believe that he may have purposefully jumped and tried to kill himself by by bashing his head against this glass wall and he lay he he was injured and they tried to save him but he wound up dying in the tank in this small little tank and they couldn't figure out how to get him out for a couple days and lolita was swimming around his dead her only companion's dead body for a couple days before they could figure out what to do and that is just one of the reasons why we as a human species have a obligation, I think, to our orca fellow travelers on Earth, if you will, to, to, to do right by them. We're going to talk about that a little bit more in a minute. Now that I told you this incredibly sad story, let's talk about something fun. Reminds me of that Simpson episode uh, where uh, Homer is having to give uh, jokes at Mr. Burns' birthday party. So Smithers gets on the microphone and says, Ladies and gentlemen, I just want to tell you that a small dog, not unlike Lassie, was just killed in the parking lot. And now the comedy stylings of Homer Simpson. That's what I feel like right now. I'm still going to do it because that's what pays the bills. Brings us the chocolate pudding. Uh, on February 14th at Lo-Fi Coffee, which is at 105 West Main Street in Mesa, Arizona. February 14th, between 1 and 3 p.m., is the Bonnie Book Browse at Lo-Fi Coffee, where you can meet Brick Cave Media authors like Sharon Skinner, Bill Campana, J.A. Giunta, J.A.M. Zeep, and me, The Clute. You can buy our products. You can hear poetry. I know I'll be reading. Bill Campana will be reading. Bill Campana, the author of... um, what is the hell? Said beauty, said to, said the beauty to the blues. Oh my god, I can't remember that. And uh, Lauren Perry, who's not a Brick Cave Media author, but will be, she's a wonderful poet and she'll be there. And if you don't have a Valentine's date, you can say that you spent February 14th for a brief time with Lauren Perry. Lauren doesn't know that I just said that. I've, I'm basically pimping Lauren out for a Valentine's Day date. Hi, Lauren! Anyway, February 14th, between 1 and 3 p.m., 
at 105 West Main Street in Mesa, Arizona at Lo-Fi Coffee. The Bonnie Book Browse. All right. Back to the show. So as I mentioned, the, the plight of Lolita is a sad one. She's in a small tank. She's kind of lost her only friend. She's old. She's about 40 years old now, and she's still having to do these tricks by rote. And, you know, maybe there's value. Maybe seeing Lolita has inspired kids out there to become marine scientists. And maybe those marine scientists are doing something from her. But she's still a prisoner. She's still alone in the world. Cause, and one of the really sad things about it is that they played... The, the southern resident orca pod is still there. And they say that killer whales, orcas, have their own speech patterns that they recognize. So they played her sounds of her family. Because these, these, these families... They're generational. There's, a, there's an orca off the coast of Vancouver who could, is between 89 and 105 years old. And she's birthed many children, and those children, they stay within their pods. They're very seldom. They, they, they leave to breed. They, go, they, look, they don't know why they do it, but they leave to be, go get genetic stock. But they played her sounds of her whale pod, and she still recognized them. So there's a lot of people out there right now who are trying to free her, and there was actually a huge rally in Miami where hundreds of people walked to the gates of Miami Seaquarium, um, which is owned by Palace Entertainment. And again, that, that, should, that should trouble you. When a marine park, a marine science park, is owned by a company that calls itself Something Entertainment. It's not Palace Science. It's not Palace, Palace, Palace Animal Care. It's Palace Entertainment. That should bother you. Makes it a for-profit. Makes it a for-profit. You know, I don't want to, I don't want to compare it to the crimes of humanity, but we can at least say that this is a, a exploitation of, uh, of, of, of what I believe. I believe dolphins and, and orcas and cetaceans are, I think they are, are sentient. I think they are self-aware. So what do you think we could do, Jen? Do you think, do you think a lot of people are saying that we need to close the marine parks down? Or at least get them to close their orca shows down. Do you think that's something that will happen? Do you think it's something that should be done? I would say at least the orca shows because they're they're so big. Mm. It's it's plain and simple. They're too big to be shut in. Right. Um, I actually looked up the Boston, like we were talking about. Yeah. They only have um seals and sea lions for shows. And, and seals and sea lions are basically like the dogs of the sea. You know, as much as I love seals and sea mm-hmm. lions, but they're not they're not <laughs> But that's not the biggest there. thing they have. Yeah, and that's the biggest thing there. And if you had a tank the size of an orca tank for seals and sea lions, they would love it. Sea lions are basically like the laziest creatures in the ocean. I, I love sea lions, but seriously, you go to like Fisherman's Wharf in, in California, or you go to like, well, I was in Ensenada, Mexico, and there's these sea lions, and they're just sitting around basically waiting to feed off the scraps of the fishermen. They don't give a shit. The only time that they care... And even then, like you, if there's a group of sea lions and one of them is being attacked by a shark, the sea lions don't get together cooperatively and try to drive the shark away. Dolphins and, and killer whales do that. The seal's just like, sorry, pal, you're on your own. Better you than me. And that goes to all pinnipeds. Seals, sea lions, walruses. They're the jerks of the ocean of the higher animals. Um... Orcas, by the way, just, you know, people always say sharks. You know, we ever hear the, the shark week and it's like, sharks are the apex predators of the sea. Nothing can stand against their bite. Wrong. The great white shark has only one natural predator, which is the orca. Orcas have learned how to kill sharks. There's been two instances that they've caught orcas um, attacking a great white shark by turning it upside down and holding it, which in- induces something called tonic immobility. And then they rip the shark's liver out. And then just let it die. And then in California, in, uh, it's Hawaii, they caught a pod of killer whales that were basically tormenting this tiger shark. This tiger shark was desperate to get away. You, you look, just Google tiger shark orca hunt and you'll, you'll, you'll find it. This tiger shark was desperate to get away. He like swam at a boat that was, that was doing it and like attacked the boat because he thought the boat was part of the, the, the hunt. And these, these orcas just came up and they ripped the shark's pectoral fins off and started playing with it. Orcas don't fuck around, man. And that's, but that, that should tell you one thing the orcas don't fuck around. Mm-mm. But how many, Jen, how many fatalities have there been of hum, humans in the wild by, uh, by, or death by orca? How many have there been? 
Yeah, I'm pretty sure it was zero. Yeah, it's zero. The closest thing I they think have. they mentioned that in the movie. They mentioned that in the movie. There have been cases where orcas have screwed around with people. There's like a famous video of a pod of orcas moving into a harbor in New Zealand and chasing a skin diver onto the rocks. But if they really wanted him dead. They could do it. They could do it. And they even chased after a dog. <laughs> the funniest footage of the this dog knows something's wrong. And this killer whale is just bearing on him like it's like, you know, that scene in Jaws where it's going after the raft. And the dog just <laughs> manages to crawl out of the water. The orca's like, that's right. This is my ocean. Punk ass dog. But but yeah, so so killer whales are at the top of the food chain. They need the stimulus and they're not getting it. And I agree with you. I think they should close the orca exhibits. And in California, they're passing they are moving forward on this. They tried to, they've tried twice now to pass a law that would ban captive orca entertainment. And SeaWorld has managed to successfully fight off um, successfully fight off this legislation. They won't be able to do it forever. And why? Because they're losing money. Mm-hmm. SeaWorld stock has plummeted, attendance is off, and this has all happened since Blackfish. There is a movie out, uh, a uh, teen lit a kid kid's book called The Fault in Our Stars. In 2014, it was a box office giant. It made $304 million worldwide. Um, and but the author of that book has also written uh another book called Paper Towns. And this book um uh has a scene where the two main characters break into SeaWorld Orlando. Now that would be free publicity for SeaWorld. They would love to have mm-hmm. that kind of publicity. If they want to get a Fault in Our Stars, $304 million, basically a free ad for SeaWorld. They probably would have said, hey, coming in. They probably would have said, yeah, ride the orcas. Well, do you want to ride a great white shark? We could probably make that happen. We're SeaWorld. But Hollywood has basically said, no, fuck you. We're not going to do the scene. Which, because, you know, it's always like, you know, the magical scene, the two kids sitting by the, by the tank, and they watch the orcas swimming by and jumping out of the water. And that would have been Hollywood magic. And they're not going to do it. The NFL, the National Football League, which uh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to make a prediction. Today is February 4th, right? Mm-hmm. The game, the big game, or the Super Bowl. NFL, you suck because you can't say Super Bowl unless you pay them money. But we're doing it because we're, this is political commentary. They can't shut us down. Uh, on the 1st of February, I believe it will be the 1st of February. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm going to predict that the Seattle Seahawks win 17 to 10 over the deflate uh, over the over the deflatriates oh <laughs> so i'm making this i'm making that prediction on the 21st 24th of uh of uh january 17 to 10 but anyway uh nfl uh they have decided and the miami dolphins basically uh which the nfl is profit sharing with all the other teams they are ending a partnership that began in 2012 uh with SeaWorld. Um, and again, it's very telling that my, the Miami Dolphins didn't do a partnership with Miami Seaquarium. Um, other companies have cut ties with SeaWorld as well. Southwest Airlines. Southwest, mm-hmm. Southwest Airlines used to have a pain, pain, a plane that was painted up to look like Shamu. Yes. Virgin America. Panama Jack, which is like sunscreen and beach products. That still exists. It still exists. Oh de- yeah, you go to South Florida, you can see like a standee at every Eckerd drugstore. Do they even have Eckerd's anymore? It's, a, it's long I've been no, away from home. I don't think so. Has Eckerd gone? Probably Walgreens now or CVS. But they have all these standees of Panama Jack sunscreen and sunblock and desanding your vagina if you happen to get <laughs> sand in your vagina. I'm just saying because women do get sand in their vaginas when they go to the beach. Am I wrong? I've never bought product. <laughs> do they have a product like that i, I don't, don't know. know i don't think so <laughs> sta travel which if you know sta travel it's the one that every college town has that travel agency it's like hey you're a student go to istanbul and get, get do heroin <laughs> uh they've cut off their taco bell has cut off their promotions hyundai um you know this is a uh, sea world's hemorrhaging money mm-hmm. and they're trying to get around it now sea world they're cash cow they're not sea cows their cash cow mm-hmm. is killer whales. Shamu. Shamu. So do you know what, you know what they've said? That they're on record saying? Oh, no. That the ocean is, quote unquote, not inherently better than orca tanks. 
And that's one thing that bothers the shit out of me. Because when I was a kid, my dad, I was a marine biology. I was on the track to become a marine biologist and oceanographer. My dad always like, you know, waited till after the shows was over. And he introduced me to the trainers and I would ask them questions. And they always said that this, the orcas are happy and they get what they need. That's a lie. And I feel bad that I bought into that lie for so long. I bought into that lie as an adult. I should have known better. But you want to believe in the lie. You want to believe in the idea of the happy orca. You want oh, to yeah, believe- even in the movie. The yeah. trainers all bought it. Yeah. And then they left. Right. And it, it's, it's sad. And it's, I, 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 I feel guilty about my previous love of SeaWorld and going to SeaWorld, making my parents take me there. If I known, if I knew then what I know now, I would have asked them to take all that money and dump it into, into Greenpeace and Sea Shepherd and all these other organizations that would have, could have shut these places down. But what SeaWorld is attempting to do is they're building a $300 million dollar Three hundred million dollars is a lot of money. That's not that's not a small chump change. Uh, an expansion plan that they say will be just as good for the whales as the ocean. And they say they're doing this. And this is according to the Dodo at, at the Dodo.com. Check it out. Um, they say that uh, SeaWorld, for all its talking about forty foot high glass walls and and you know changing out the whales so they don't have inbreeding and, and all this other stuff. They haven't filed one fucking permit yet. And if you've been to SeaWorld in, in San, uh, San Diego, they're built, you need permits because they're right on the coast. I mean, there's all kinds of things that have to be taken care of. So I would say if anyone from SeaWorld is listening to this, I would say you, the listener, if you're listening to this, stop what you're doing and then find a way to, right now, and I'm not a huge fan of PETA. I think sometimes they are a little mm. too extreme. But they have a, they have a petition. And it says, urge Palace Entertainment, the owner of Miami Sea Aquarium, to free Lolita. SeaWorld's one animal. Sea, Miami Sea Aquarium is another. Lolita is one whale. She needs to go to a place that will, in her last years of her life, make her happy. Um, and there's other things you can do. You know, go to the dodo.com, click on SeaWorld at the top, and there's a, all manner of resources that you can get that will tell you what you can do and, and give you upcoming stories and everything that you can do to make it so that um, these killer whales are taken care of and that SeaWorld and Miami's Aquarium Palace Entertainment do the right thing. And, uh, you know, the thing is you can't feel guilty forever. If, if, you do, if you do feel guilt, there are organizations out there, legitimate organizations that are going to help these killer whales both when they are rehabilitated and hopefully being allowed to go back into the sea or just to try to help them now. Um, the one groups that I donate to are Oceana, uh, the ocean conservancy. Um, I believe, I believe in the mission of sea shepherd. I believe in the mission of Greenpeace in spite of some of the, their flaws. I think everyone, each one of them does a, a greater good and they deserve your money to help, uh, protect the ocean world, the marine world. So, that's it. What do you have anything to say? Final words, Jen? Uh, final thoughts. We will provide a link to that. Awesome. Petition. We're going to provide a link to the petition. Yes, we will. That's our PR person. She's going to help us out on this. I'm really looking forward to um, everything. Again, we are not affiliated with the Dodo, but we love their work here at the B-Town Report. So, go check them out, thedodo.com. You can read all the articles that I've kind of mentioned to you today and uh, quoted some information out of um, the power in the in the words of Captain Planet the power is yours you can do things that will legitimately help the world and save these really beautiful and wonderful creatures if you ever see me get me drunk and I'll tell you about the time that I was in the water with uh, not in the water but on a boat when killer whales were surrounding us it was amazing by our powers combined. By our powers combined. All right. So that was uh, the B-Town Report for February 4th, 2015. My name is The Clute. I am your host. Our executive producer is Bob Nelson of Brick Cave Media. Our in-studio producer and sound guy extraordinaire and filmmaker. Check out uh, him. Google him. I'm sure you can find it. Is uh, Johnny Skinner. Uh, PR person also in the jump seat talking with us today about uh, killer orcas, killer whales was Jen LaBuzz. Um... We're hosted by YouTube now. Oh, I haven't mentioned this. I haven't made a plea for money. Uh, if you have any money left over after donating to all the charitable groups, donate money to us. 
Uh, you can go to check some of our older shows on uh, the beatdownreport.podbean.com. There was a link. Click on the link to donate money. We'll get it. And the music you hear in the background is always our wonderful, cool-ass theme, Powerhouse by Raymond Scott, who's dead, but his work lives on. All right. Beatdown Report for February 4th, 19... 19? What the hell? Did I just, like, fall into a time warp? 2015. Don't forget, you can always comment on the YouTube channel. We will answer your comments as best we can to make it sure that you know that we, the Beatdown Report, care about you, the listener. All right. That's it. Have a great week. We'll see you next time.